Welcome right into the studio, Hidden Nation. You got Josh Carey, your hidden entrepreneur, right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. And anytime you want, all you got to do is download that free iHeartRadio app, scroll till your heart's content, and you can watch or listen to this show or any show you want on the platform, and the world is yours. Hidden Nation, I got to tell you, we got such a great, wonderful, dare I say, intriguing show for you today. You are going to want to buckle in for our guest, Don Kalam, 75 books on Amazon, uber best-selling book status, and that doesn't even begin to scratch the surface. Don Kalam, welcome to the program. Hello. Peace and love, Josh. Peace and love. Tell me about this first book you were uh, just sharing with me in the Four Dummies series, because I know it's about how to make your name an actual brand. What is this? All right. Trust and Limit Liability for Asset Protection for Dummies. I got the book right here. And um, this is like a, it shows, talks about a lot of information made available to the public that CPAs or the IRS might not necessarily want you to know, but it is available to the public just protecting um, at your assets. You know, if you got a car and you're using it for a business, that's an asset for your business. Um, your house, you know, if you, you know, we got Airbnbs, we got tours, we got a lot of different online businesses. You gotta understand these are assets. And even if you have an app, you're using the app, an Airbnb app, your phone is now an asset. Your computer is an asset. So you gotta learn how to protect these things and keep them from the public view keep them from getting seized because anything can happen today in today's world, man. You know, you could, you could jaywalk and you, you might not, Hey, I need your phone. We're going through your phone. So you got to learn how to protect these things and keep them protected in private property outside the scope of the um, public view. You really come from a colorful past, right? You've been, uh, you were homeless. You were in prison for years for counterfeiting money is that true yeah that's that's absolutely correct um but it was the it's the struggle that made me better because i truly believe we live in a free country there's there's some people that can't get up and go get water a lot of different things they, they can't even get wi-fi at certain times we got wi-fi free over here in america so i had to learn that it was myself I was leading myself everywhere that it was. I had to get my thoughts together and get refocused. What What do you attribute to this, that initial path of yours? What was growing up like? What was that environment like? How did they set you up for where you are today? Growing up, I grew up in um, like HUD housing that we call it the project. So government housing authority. And I, and I grew up in a, a father was an alcoholic. So I grew up in an abusive home and then since my mom didn't want to get beat all the time, she would work a lot or stay out. So pretty much I was always fighting for attention and wanting validation from my elders. And so I, I would do anything to try to make them proud, whether it was straight A's, you know, whatever I had to do to try to get that attention, you know, and growing up, that's what I'm still doing. Like, it's like, I'm trying to get my parents' attention, whether it be God or whoever, whoever's looking at me. I'm trying to impress them, so to speak, with my knowledge, because that's how I've always been um, been praised growing up, been able to get attention. You were bullied as a child. I could relate to that, too. How was that? No, I wasn't I wasn't bullied. It was more at home. I'm, it's abusive. You know, the only person ever bullied me would probably be my dad when he drunk. <laughs> you know, so if, if I got a grown man bullying me, there's nothing that somebody my age could do to me. <laughs> yeah that i understand so that yeah. took you on a path of just trying to trying to make ends meet and find yeah, significance yes. within yourself of course and then like my dad's mother she was always there my grandma wanda so i would always do my best to try to impress her you know so when i when i became older 15 16 because we even talked about you see i'd be smoking cannabis right so when i'm 15 16 as long as i'm making good grades she let me take my herbal blessings to her house. <laughs> how, how, how does somebody like you, how do you relate to money? 
um, I used to think it was everything. Now I understand that people are more valuable than money. I used to think that was the answer for everything until I learned about myself and my own mindset. And I learned you use money to make people work for you. You make money serve you. Some people find it valuable. It's really not valuable. It's, it's, it could do as, you can have as much money as you can handle and it's that simple. But it's people are more valuable than money. And that's what I've been learning these last two years, really. These last two years, I've been realizing that because you can get a bunch of money, but if, if your mindset's not not where it needs to be, it's gonna it's gonna leave you it's gonna leave your hands. Explain this to me. Um, over seventy five books, best selling on Amazon. You can't dispute that. You see your profile page there. You also <laughs> showed me the the real time royalties uh, month to date. Uh, which is over ten thousand uh, dollars. I, I mean, how does how does it? I mean, one book isn't under. How do you have seventy five books, and how do you make money off of these? Um, I I really don't make money off all seventy five of them, sure. but anywhere between twenty to thirty of those books that are always going to keep me eating. So, but um, the testimonials is people when they get the book and it because this right here. I make $3 off this book. I don't make hardly anything off this book, but I got other books I do. So when you start catching and trending, best selling, everything else catches. But The Million Dollars Worth of Game is a good book that's a bestseller for me. And then I got I have this book about the treasury. And that's number one right now, best selling. That's making me, today alone, I've done sold like 150 copies. So just today. Today? Yeah, just today. <laughs> Don, what is the mindset that drives you today? I mean, you've come from such a uh, a history here to get yourself into this position. What do you live by? What drives you each and every day? My offspring. My I told you I have four children, but my youngest two, Isaiah and Elijah, they did something to me. And since they've entered my life, I've understood that I'm here to make my future self happy. I'm here to, to live. So my children, since they're already here, their offspring will still be toasting to our legacy. So that's what I wake up thinking about daily. It takes a man to raise a man, but a woman to raise a nation. But the boys will walk in my footsteps. So I got to make sure that I'm taking giant leaps and, and, and breaking generational curses. What about personal responsibility? How does that play into your life? Um... I could probably do better. That's that's a great question. I'm 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 the one that's adventurous and freedom loving. So, but when it comes to responsibility as the family man, I make sure I'm there financially. But you know, children they need your time the most. So it's about making sure that you you can give them the most time you can. And this is why I like to fly on private jets. That's my excuse. Tell me about that. that. Yeah. Yeah. So I can as private jets. I started when I started hanging around celebrities. They they used to tell me I wasn't really um, living a private life because I'm, I'm like, well, look at look at the Amish or whoever, right? And they're like, well, this is the real private life on private jets. What does that so mean? That's where I like the to private do. life. Life um, outside the scope of um, the so-called public sector. When you understand public banking, because I teach financial literacy, if you look up public banking, all public banks are owned by the government. I mean, if you look up the private sector, private bank, let's say. Um, well, I got Charles Schwartz, for instance. That's a private bank. That's private investing. Anytime you deal with a public bank system, you're investing. You become an investor. But instead of you getting your proceeds, you're getting, letting the bank take it. That makes sense? Yeah. So they told you you have to live a private life. That's the goal? Well, when I was, when I was helping certain people, because you got to understand a lot of these celebrities, they don't know what they're signing up for. And this is why I come in and help people. And... And, and they're not really living a private life. They do not own their intellectual property. You hear when you're on the phone, this will be monitored and recorded. You came through the world through an ultrasound. This is why you need to own a record label. The first thing you, they, they, the first thing they labeled you was with an ultrasound. That's an ultrasound. There ain't no microwave. It's an ultrasound. Two different, two different frequencies. <laughs>
are you are you a religious man i'm more spiritual than religious how does that play into your life i'm i'm very well known in the muslim community and then the conscious community as well um i love that aspect I, by the way i'm all for it yeah i was raised a christian however which i believe they you know it's part of the same thing like i like i told you before the show I actually read the King James Bible. Like I don't, I don't read the Quran. I, I read the King James Bible. Um, secondly, when it comes to the system, I have my own family Bible. If they ask what religion I follow, I'm gonna tell them Kalamanism. It's a family Bible. It's none of your business. <laughs> you know, you keep all that stuff private. You know, people don't know you can use your baptismal certificate instead of your birth certificate for identity, or you can use a family Bible record. A lot of people don't know these things. All the Bible is is your lineage of your generation. You cannot hand down generational wealth without a family Bible, and you cannot hand down generational wealth through a public bank account. All right, let me help. Uh, let me try to unravel all this, how you got from where you were to where you are. You grew up in a uh, somewhat abusive household, right? It was chaotic, yes. and that set yes. you on a path to wanting to uh, do good for yourself, improve the situation. So you went out there, you were trying to find ways to meet the right people, make the right money. Was that the start of your your teen and, and, and life that you were trying to build for yourself? Um, I started discovering knowledge. I got myself out the feds is what happened. When I counterfeited money, I got myself out the federal penitentiary with paperwork. And the judge was like, you're free to go. I'm thinking I'm going to get rich off this, this newfound knowledge I, I have. Um, you know, I learned my name is a business. I believe that these courts are tax courts. You know, I, I believe I learned that the United States and all these governments are corporations, right? If it's not, a, if you, there's not a victim in the, in the crime, it's not a real crime. Does that make sense? You have to have a victim for it to be a crime or it's just a contract that you're agreeing to. That's why they say, do you understand your charge? Well, come sign this plea bargain. <laughs> That's why they have a clerk. The, the clerks handle money. That's all they handle. That's all the clerk handles is money. So when I started learning these things, they let me go. They shut up. There's rules to it is what they told me. But I'm like, no, I'm getting rich. They're going to have to kill me. I was on a rebel stuff. And then I just seen that everybody thought I was crazy. Hey, you're crazy. You know, uh, even though I proved on a uh, psychiatric evaluation, I wasn't crazy. So that started splitting up with my, my youngest uh, children's mother, uh, Isaiah and Elijah. Those are my youngest two kings. And their mother just wasn't with the stuff that I was on. But so basically this was to prove to them that all the knowledge that I have, it was really to prove to my kids so they'll get the knowledge how I wanted to teach them. You, you were, who provided a, a psychiatric evaluation on you? The, the federal government. For what reason? Because they said I was um, suffering from delusions because of the things that I was saying on the record. And then they proved I wasn't crazy. And then now, they let me go. <laughs> now, Don, how in the world would we um, even attempt to find a baseline for crazy or not crazy? Where where do you think they're judging this on? Um, due to the fact of the things that I was saying, that the government was a corporation, you know, even though it's in their law, I'm using their laws, their codes. But I had an attorney as a mouthpiece, and he was the one doing it. So, but when I proved I wasn't crazy, I got him off the case, and they let me go. So from that moment on, prior to that is when you were doing all the counterfeit stuff, right? So you weren't making any um, uh, any income on a regular right. basis, right? So from that moment on, where did you start looking for the uh, income to survive? Uh, it really just came. I was doing, I, when I got out, I was just preaching. And then I, I would actually find um, people fighting like weed cases and cocaine cases and sales cases like that. And I was getting, selling them and helping them with the court case. Mm -hmm. And then when they seen the cases got dropped or dismissed, they would tell other people. So, so you I'm were, like, who's Walgreens? I used to be like, who, you, you've heard of Walgreens, right? Who goes to jail if Walgreens sells crack cocaine? Who's going to jail? They got 30 days to cease and desist. The reason why you don't have 30 days to cease and desist is because you didn't make your name a business. <laughs> so we go back to that. So how does somebody, what are the steps or the knowledge they need to know to make their name a business? Trust your name. Make your name a LLC. I also use 
record labels too as as well because that's how you control the record tell me it, when it comes to the government you have to put it on the record right so you have to view every government as like a record label or a holding company and they're dealing with intellectual property they want to take your picture they need your signature they need your voice your name whatever it is you put the forms you create or the forms is the form created of you and the system they don't know who you are all the system is voluntary so however you're make, made up in the system is whatever you volunteered on their on their forms. You can only control what you create. So I always create my own forms. I'm not going to fill out anything they give me. My goodness. In a nation, you're tuned into the conversation I'm having with Don Kalam, uh, best-selling author, entrepreneur, money advocate, uh, all things incredible here. Don, I want to go back to a person in your life who really helped shape who and where you are today. Who can we pin that on? Um, there's a few people. Um, when it comes to the to being able to break through into the so-called limelight, I'm going to give it to Winky Wright, the Hall of Fame boxer. He's a Hall of Fame boxer. If you look him up, he's, he's born in D.C., but he was raised in St. Petersburg, Florida. He's before Floyd, Money, Mayweather, all of them. But he's he's worked with those guys. Mike Tyson, he told me a story about when he first met Mike Tyson. So he's a Hall of Fame boxer. He showed me so much, man. And um, basically, after I shook his hand and admired his life, <laughs> I admired his life. Because what you praise, you raise. Everything that I admired about him that started happening to me. I started flying in private jets. I started getting noticed out here where I'm eating lunch. And people just started, Don Kalam. Like, cause that when, when he's at home, he can't go anywhere in the public without people being recognizing who he is. In the same way in Las Vegas, when I, I, I hung out with him in his hometown, St. Petersburg, and I also hung out with him in Vegas a few times. And I, you know, I've met a lot of I met NBA celebrities, I've met everybody just dealing with Winky. And then Fresco Kane, he um did my song, We Made It. Um, I had him come to a book release party. He brought the uh, a multi-platinum uh, artist with him, Chingy. If you ever heard of Chingy, I like the way you do that right there. And I, it's just been opening doors ever since. That led me to DJ Monte. I've had sit-downs with Zaytoven, a famous producer. I mean, I've just met a lot of different individuals, man, in the music industry and and and, and hip-hop period. I got a shout-out from Cedric the Entertainer. <laughs> Love Cedric. <laughs> <laughs> Winky plays golf with him. So, you know, I just started learning how to play golf. <laughs> That's like, where the deals go down. That's where the deals go down. Yeah, I think everybody knows that. There's truth to that, huh? <laughs> you know firsthand. Yes. Uh, I love that phrase you said, what you praise, you raise. What does that mean to you? Gratitude is the attitude. So a lot of people, so I comment, like I told you a little bit, your name's the business. And I used to feel good about helping people learn that the name is the business and then learn that, you know, you everything is pretty much prepaid when you understand the United States debt and the bankruptcy in the United States. So I show people how to get out of their obligations, but I'm not necessarily into that no more. Um, Cause you know, I, I have a nonprofit and that's who takes care of my bills. My church does. <laughs> Wait a second. Uh, <laughs> you said you help people get, or you used to, or you know how to help people get out of their debt obligations? Yes, such as car notes, uh, mortgages. I help people. I started, the first thing I ever helped people with was foreclosures because I was homeless. Mm. And I'm like, if I help you, I always got a room here, right? And I would make them sign that agreement. Wow. So I would never be homeless again. So how does somebody get out of their debt obligations? You make your name a, a, a LLC, like Michael Jordan. That's a business, correct? Go ahead, yeah. All right, so I make my name a business. I you, You've heard of debt disputes, right? Yes. All right, everything's a tax issue when you're disputing it. Ain't nobody assessing the tax. So I dispute it from the tax issue point because if you look up HJR 192, this is House Joint Resolution 192. This is a public a public law. All debts are prepaid. They took the gold out. Gold and silver is real money. Now in their system, they're making gold and silver a commodity or a future contract. So when you look at the dollar symbol, you 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 see you know what the dollar symbol looks like? It means it you could say it means ISIS. It's I-S-I-S. -S. That's why Bill Clinton said this. 
depends on what your definition of is is. This is why he didn't get impeached. I'm dropping you a million dollars worth of game right now. Man. Come on, I'm here. Go ahead. So, so you know, the dollar bill is no right now. It, they switched the Fed now, so the Federal Reserve note is not even. It's a promissory note. It's worthless. They're not even. They're, they're not even using it no more. They're using Treasury bills now. But real money is gold and silver, natural resources. That's why I put it in my mouth. If you got real gold and silver, you can't even go to jail because the system's under bankruptcy. If you know how to implement the. Uh, the laws correctly. What do you do with your with your days? What's a is there such thing as a typical Don Kalam day? Any standard no, in your so, life? What do you do? So I'm, either I'm always working, like right now I got 30 calls. Like I'm probably booked like you are. I got about 30 coaching one on one consults for my private members. And then I write books or I research. I really don't have no life. You know, and then when I come, when I go out in the public. I just go, I try to preach the word. I hand out business cards. I keep business cards with the QR code. Go check out the book. I'm just always working. I eat, sleep, and shit my craft. I really do. What is the, are there a variety of messages that you preach to different people? Or is there one overriding Don Kalam message that someone can grasp onto? Prosperity is your divine birthright. That's the main message. And then I speak whatever comes to my mind. I can only, it's garbage in, garbage out. Input in is what, what comes to your output. So I'm just making sure I'm intaking the right things. And not to get too deep or off topic. So I started learning it as a teenager. Because you know, well, growing men, growing boys, we watch pornography and things like that. So I noticed that where attention goes, power flows. The same thing I was watching before I started my day is when I'm paying attention to out here during the day. So I make sure that I wake up to affirmations, prosperity, my business, whatever it may be. So that's where my focus is during the day. Because if they say, you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, didn't you? So I make sure I wake up on the money side of the bed. <laughs> Unbelievable. Who do you feel, who, who are your one-on-one um, -on -one private clients? What, where are they in life? What are they about? What do they need? Where are they going for? Um, starting off, that was, that was really like in the most ratchet parts of the ghetto you can find. And I've elevated that to by switching just the way I move things. With this book, I'm I'm attracting more business owners. I just sat down with a college professor in Hermosa Beach, one guy who owned a private island. I'm like, how am I attracting these people? And it's due to the to the products and services that I've elevated now that I'm offering. I know about private securities and private bonds, municipal bonds. I know how cities are created. So I'm I'm going into different doors at different meetings, you know, private country club meetings real estate meetings, sitting down with these different people, man. I'm telling you, it all starts at the golf course. <laughs> how are you attracting them? What was the answer to that when you're saying, how am I attracting all how, this into how, my life? I mean, it's just, I just believe that what's done in the dark comes out to light. So what are you focused on the, when, when you're by yourself? And, and when you're role playing by yourself, when you come out in the world, they just come to you naturally. If that what, makes sense. Yeah, tell me that phrase again, what, uh, what you work on in the dark. Yeah, what's done in the dark comes out in the light. So, you know, the, the term abracadabra means I create what I speak. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. So conversation runs the nation. So whatever you're telling yourself in the dark, that's what's going to come out into the light. You have a meditative practice? You're spiritual? Yeah, I don't watch porn no more. <laughs> Go ahead. Porn is, a, porn is a form of meditation. So when I'm sitting here listening to motivational videos, or, you know, even Tony Robbins, you know, I listen to T.D. Jakes, Reverend Ike, Alan Watts, Manly P. Hall, people like these. So and when I'm doing these things in the dark and tomorrow's the full moon. So I write down right now. Last night, got my bucket list, wrote a new bucket list down. I wrote down 10 things I want to do. And I believe conversation runs the nation. So I write it down as that I'm already doing it or that it's already passed. Don stands for Dreams Obey Narrators, D-O-N, or it stands for Deciding on Now, because now creates tomorrow. Could you read us one of those as an example? Yeah, let me find you one. It feels great having a Malibu mansion in the mountains overlooking L.A. So that's a vision that you want to that's achieve. A vision. Yes, that's a vision. It feels so great to have a Malibu to have a Malibu mansion overlooking L.A. I remember sleeping in my car on the side of Pacific Coast Highway 
envisioning being becoming Don Kalam, homeless in the car, looking at the mountains. I said, one day I'm going to be there. Instead of being in this car, I'm going to be there. And this car is going to lead me to that. Wow. So what was the what was the first step to get you out of that car? What happened? I know it's all the positive and the visuals and the believing, but what was the action that took? Um. So so the action, somebody called me one day while I'm sleeping in a car and they're like, we've seen your video. We would like to meet you. We're in Missouri. We're going to fly to you wherever you're at. Now, I didn't have money to get a place to do it. So I was like, OK, we're going to meet in the mountains. We're going to hold this three days in the mountains. And I'm talking about it was it was it was it was magnificent. I helped them get out some mortgages, and I've been. They, I didn't know they was preachers of a church. They led me to other members, and man, that that just had a, a whole ripple effect. You are a seeker of opportunity. <laughs> yeah, Is that true. Yes. yes, I just won't. I won't stay down. Because Les Brown said, if you can look up, you can get up. Wow. This is, this is extraordinary. Where do you want people to go? You want them to go to the Amazon page? Where could we lead people to get to know more of you? Yes, look up Don Kalam on Amazon, D-O-N-K-I-L-A-M. That's D-O-N-K-I-L-A-M. We have some best-selling books right now on Amazon. They're all nonfiction. Well, Hidden Nation, uh, I'm still buzzing and reeling from this conversation. I know we're going to have Don Kalam back soon to to dig deeper into all of this. You know, Don, you can't get to know all of you in 27 minutes, can you? I think there's a little more that's uh, yeah, lurking yeah. inside. I would love to come back on the uh, the Josh Carey Show, yeah. iHeartRadio. I appreciate it, man. You're in, your enthusiasm, contagious, man. You 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 just have an aura about yourself, man. You love what you do. That makes me feel great. I was running a little behind, man. You were so cool about it, man. Like I just loved your attitude. Isn't that what what it's all about? What else do I have if it's not my attitude, my impression, my energy? I'm you know that's this. it. You know sincerity, this. person. Listen, so spades is 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 what I teach when I teach sales. So it's sincerity, personality, attitude, determination, enthusiasm, and sleep. See, now you we we could do another show just on that teaching sales, right? That's what you said. I want to yeah. know all about this. Three G's. Get in, get it, and get out. <laughs> Say it again. The three G's. Get in, get it, and get out. That's the that's the process to selling, right? Yeah. Whoa. Yep. This is amazing. Hidden Nation, please stay close by. Uh, get in touch with Don Kalam via Amazon or any other method on all the socials. You're going to get to hear and see exactly uh, his, his, his inner mind, his inner dialogue, because you have those good reels. You have those good videos, Don. You're doing it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being on your show today. I really enjoyed it. Can't wait to do it again. Hidden Nation, stay close. And remember, get out there. Be visible. Show up in all the ways you know darn well you are capable of doing. The days are over where you have to hide behind fear or hide behind a mask and a persona that you know does not serve you. The time is now. Don Kalam knows it. You know it, Hidden Nation. Thanks for investing your time. We're going to do it again real soon. Until we do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Take care. Peace and love.